when I was young, the square was quite a different place. A great place to hang out. That was until the whole area was flattened. In my opinion, it's too open now. Not enough places to hide and relax in. I'd at least have those gates opened up so that everyone could use the yard. My dad used to tell me that the square used to be the heart of the town. I used to work here. It wasn't for very long. I don't think anyone would remember me now. I got pulled out in the middle of the night. The idea of being sent here at that time, with nobody about, filled me with dread. It turned out to be some kind of flying bug that sat off the other. It was quite a beautiful moment actually, with the torch lighting up the gallery space and the unidentified insect fluttering around. The Death Watch beetle is often found in churches, hence the association with death reflected in its name. To attract mates, the wood borers create a tapping or ticking sound that can be heard in the rafters of old buildings, especially on quiet summer nights, which they are also associated with. Quiet, sleepless nights. They are also named after the vigil or night watch, kept beside the dying or dead. Superstitious types like me dad see the death watch as an omen of impending death. There was also this sparrow hawk that took the heads off the pigeons. It waited until they flew into the windows of the gallery, knocking them out. If the window didn't have them, then that sculpture in the yard did. Quite often we'd find four or five mangled together. It saved us loads of money. Talking of your head, did you know that Prince Philip came here once for a cuppa while waiting for the Queen? He was doing something else in the town that he obviously wasn't interested in. I even bought a box of posh grapes to have with me dinner that day. I always ate next to the container at the side. There were so many characters that came through those doors. I never did see the infamous monk who wandered around with his udder. I never told me mates I worked in. I told him I was a mechanic. I do know a lot about cars. Do you know, by the way, the reason that there's loads of graffiti on the wall to the left of the entrance to the church is because it's where the board choir waited before they sang so that they had a chance to tag the names scratch their identities into history. During the 19th century especially during the rural clearances by the landowners families were evicted from their homes with nowhere else to go they often took shelter in church grounds and left their mark by scratching their names on the walls, hoping for salvation that probably never came. We had a young lad who had gone missing a while ago, living down by the doors to the cellars. I lost count of the amount of times I accidentally stood on him while sleeping underneath all those newspapers and leaves. I'm not sure if he was ever reunited with his family or if he wanted to. The light in the church is sometimes otherworldly. I much prefer it to when the space is dark and uninviting. Apparently there's never been any stained glass here, though according to some older visitors, during my time here, they claim to have seen them, probably during a premonition. I wish we'd had some kind of sign for when that angel fell from the rafters. Could have landed on someone. Luckily for us, it fell in the middle of the night. Also, thank God, there was no interaction between the fallen angel and any of the gallery attendants or public, as some fallen angels are seduced by the beauty of humans, have sexual intercourse with us, and corrupt us. This place harbours a lot of secrets. A colleague of mine, naming no names, used to meet a brother here at lunchtime. Something to do with his wife being a bit barmy and banning him from seeing any of his family. There was also this old fellow who brought in his own secret spoon. We all knew he had it in his top pocket because whenever he asked for a tea or soup, he always said he didn't need a spoon. He'd religiously polish it up beforehand with a hand, then cleaning it again before looking around and popping it in his top pocket. 
I believe he was an old army or RAF officer. I wish I'd chatted more to him. So many people used to ring up and ask the same questions over and over again. The affinity that people have with this place never ceases to amaze me.